our, of my presentation would be as follows. I'll just give a brief overview on the data of metastatic cancers upfront, introduction to metronomic therapy, and our data on metronomic therapy in refractory cancers. When I was in training in United States after my initial training at this institute, one of my teachers there told me that the first chance is for all patients, irrespective of how bad the patient looks. Because even if you say it's 10% chance, you never know who is going to be in that 10% out of the 100 who is going to be a survivor. So first chance is for all. You may take a call after failure how aggressive you want to be. So with that same approach, when I came back, I initiated treatment with the same approach that any metastatic patient who came to me, I would always offer treatment for cure, even if it was a 10% chance. And in metastatic osteosarcoma, we published our data wherein the final outcome was around 20% of patients turned out to be long-term survivors with metastatic disease. We did identify that those who had more than three metastases, all of them ended up dying, but after a certain period of time. It is open to debate whether the extra 18 months of life, how bad it was or how good it was. I did not do any quality of life assessment. So if you look at patients who had less than three or up to three metastases, their overall survival was nearly 45 to 50%. And it's only patients more than three metastases who did poorly. Likewise, in metastatic Ewing sarcoma, which is even a more deadly disease than metastatic osteosarcoma, again, if I look at cure, ultimate cure, was achieved in only 18% of our patients in metastatic Ewing sarcoma. We did identify one category which uniformly was fatal. Patients with hypoalbuminemia below 3.4, every single case ended up dying. And I want to make this statement here that these are the patients in metastatic Ewing's who probably may not be candidates for upfront chemotherapy. We also analyzed our data in metastatic soft tissue sarcomas other than rhabdos and Ewing's and osteo. And again, we found this includes adult patients as well. And we found that patients who were hypoalbuminemic had an event-free survival of only three months. So albumin is a key factor because it doesn't allow you to give proper therapy. They are malnourished and so on and so forth, which makes proper treatment very difficult. But certainly a patient who is well-nourished would be benefited from chemotherapy and a small proportion of them even in metastatic disease end up becoming long-term survivors but here the topic that I'm going to discuss is something else we are going to discuss patients who have had this initial treatment those who have succeeded fine now those who have failed what are the options one option is we can give one more salvage chemotherapy. If we have targeted therapy offer that, I would always feel that an oral targeted therapy is the best option. Some of them are very expensive and beyond the range of most patients, even if they are rich and if they have to spend from their own pocket. Anybody knows what this is in the audience? 
metronome. How many of you play music or are interested in music? Around eight or ten hands up. So yesterday there was um, a cultural program which I missed, which I usually attend from the College of Nursing. I'm sure some musical program must have been there. So this instrument keeps playing at regular intervals. And from this instrument, the term metronomic therapy has evolved. So let's see what is metronomic therapy. Metronomic therapy is the frequent administration of chemotherapeutic drugs at doses which are below the maximum tolerated dose with no prolonged drug-free breaks. So you keep giving low dose chemotherapy at regular intervals in the hope that the toxicity is minimal and the way this thing acts is not by cell kill but by anti-angiogenic effect. So it decreases the blood vessels around the tumor and that's how it acts. And also it causes a change in cytokines, a lot of cytokines, T regulatory cells, many mechanisms have been proposed but none has been confirmed. When I say metronomic chemotherapy, it means I'm only using metronomic chemotherapy. But in real world, a better term is metronomics because we combine with chemotherapy many non-anti-cancer drugs as well. So for example, metformin, retinoic acid, statins, thalidomide, these are not anti-cancer drugs, but they act as disease biologic modifiers and they get incorporated into the metronomic regimen. So a, a more composite term is metronomics. So let me summarize what is metronomic therapy. Frequent administration of drugs, not three weekly or six weekly as we generally do. No prolonged inter interruptions using a biologic optimized dose, no application of growth factors, preference for oral drugs, and hoping that there are low incidence of treatment related side effects. But let me tell you, every review or every meeting of metronomic ends with a question that we should do a randomized trial and see if it works or not. That's the end of every meeting and every review article. I also want to tell you that sometimes when we give metronomic or any therapy, any treatment to some patient and who does well, we remember, we publish. We forget patients who have got the same treatment and have died. They go into our background memory cells. Only the ones who have done well, they stay alive. Because they are alive, they come and they stay alive in our mind. But the real answer only comes when you randomize the same population into two arms and get an answer. We took this work at our center and we thought we'll answer it. We did not agree with empiricism and we thought we'll answer this question with conviction. So five years back, it was, we designed a study where our primary objective was to assess the effect of metronomic chemotherapy on progression-free survival. The secondary objectives were to assess its effect on overall survival and there were other secondary objectives as well which I'm not going to address here which included quality of life, effect on uh, biomarkers which I'm not going to address in this meeting here. We used a cocktail of drugs which has been previously used, thalidomide, 
it is an anti-angiogenic drug. Celecoxib, which is an anti-inflammatory drug. Cyclophosphamide and etoposide, which are anti-cancer drugs. All these drugs are tested, used in cancer patients, and this cocktail regimen has been had been used earlier, but in single arm studies, in 10 patients, 15 patients, but that's about it. So we planned a study where we took, it was a randomized phase 3 placebo controlled double blind parallel design study. Our patients we took and the study duration was October 13 to December 15th. So who were the patients that we took? These were patients who were progressive pediatric extracranial solid tumors who had got two or more lines of chemotherapy failed and not just failed but were progressive with no other curative option age 5 to 18 years and an ECOG performance status of at least up to 3. We randomized them into best supportive care because that's the standard treatment for this group of patients with placebo versus best supportive care and this cocktail regimen. It took a lot of effort for me to get placebos of these cheap, very cheap drugs from the pharmaceutical industry, but we managed it. Most of our patients, we, we recruited 108 patients because that was our sample size calculation and around 60% of our patients were sarcomas and the rest were other solid tumors. Our outcome was as follows. When we took the entire cohort, the progression, the proportion of patients who progressed at six months was exactly same in the two arms, which meant that metronomic therapy had no benefit in progressive pediatric cancers who had failed two lines of treatment or more lines of treatment. Overall survival was also not any different. So the final outcome of the study was that it failed, that it was not a success. But let me tell you, this was an exploratory study. There was no existent data prior to this. So even though the subgroup analysis was not part of the planned study, we did do a subgroup analysis to see if there was any input. And we got two leads. Number one, patients who reached more than three cycles in either arm had a benefit from metronomic. Patients other than bone sarcomas had a benefit with metronomic therapy. Clearly, you can see in these survival curves, the red line is doing better than the blue line. And this is the metronomic arm who went up to three cycles or more. And these were independently predictive. Likewise, in the non-bone sarcoma group, the red line is the one with metronomic and clearly it seemed to have an effect as in prolonging PFS and OS. I again want to admit that our study was not powered to answer this question, but this was our exploratory analysis. This data was recently published in JAMA Oncology in April 2017 and I also want to say that this uh, abstract was adjudged as the best pediatric abstract in the American Society of Clinical Oncology meeting in the year 2016, last year. 
the strength was that we came to know that metronomic is not the answer for all pediatric refractory tumors. And certainly, it is not an answer for bone tumors. A, another study, I think from South America, tried metronomic in bone tumors and showed that it was not successful. But it did appear to have a role in non-bone sarcoma refractory pediatric tumors. I would say the future prospects for metronomics are to study more homogeneous patient populations, emphasize on identifying and validating surrogate markers for response to this mode of therapy, use of metronomic therapy as a potential treatment in upfront metastatic cancers who are, which are not curative based on the risk factors that we have identified or other groups have identified. But I want to emphasize, let not empiricism rule us. Solve the puzzle by randomized trial and not just believe data when people just say that it works or it doesn't work. I want to acknowledge my team. Um, I don't know how to point this out. There's a pointer here. Oh, let, okay. Dr. Raja is a faculty with us and he was a DM resident when this work was done. I want to acknowledge him. Dr. Atul Batra works with me as well and he was also instrumental in planning this study when he was a DM resident. These are all some of my nurses, my PhD students, some of the residents who continue are doing, who do and have done previously research work with me. And I want to thank All India Institute where I work, which gives me the ability to see all these patients and do all this work. Thank you very much.